Isn't it incredibly frustrating that your desire to sing may be really strong and then you, right in a moment of truth, freeze, nothing. Or maybe even worse, just the thought of singing has you freeze up. And you don't dare risk the humiliation of something bad happening in public, so you shut it down even if you suspect somebody's within earshot. What a shame. Now, the first thing I want you to know about this situation is your muscles aren't to blame. There's obviously some fear you have associated with singing, and that fear is causing inhibition. And it's that muscle inhibition that's to blame for lack of range, poor breathing habits, the dry mouth that we get, obviously, even just the lack of desire to follow through. Inhibition can shut you down as a singer. Now, I hope you know that vocal exercises are a great way to develop your vocal skills. And if you don't know that, I want you to think of vocal exercises as the seeds you plant today for a better voice tomorrow. But the problem is, if you're practicing and reinforcing vocal exercises with that frozen mindset, with inhibition still inside you, it's kind of like planting seeds in the dead of winter. Unfortunately, all of those scales and lip trills and passionate desires to sing are blocked from taking root. It's also really hard for listeners to relax as you struggle with your frozen mindset. But what if you could just melt away your inhibition like a springtime thaw? And just like planting seeds in springtime makes sense, it makes a lot of sense to reduce your inhibition first and then your audience will be much more receptive. Come on, let's go inside. I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Now, I didn't mean come back into my studio. I meant let's go into my skull, because that's where all the real coordination of singing takes place. And to better understand how to reduce inhibition, it really does make sense to learn just a little bit about the brain. Now, I just so happen to have a x-ray function on this camera, so let me see if I can get this dialed in. You see, the brain is basically constructed in three layers. The first and oldest layer is down here, the brainstem. That's where all the involuntary actions of singing take place, like breathing and facial expressions. And the third layer is the outermost layer. And it's the thing we most think of when we picture a brain in our minds. It's called the neocortex, and it's divided into many different areas, each of which are responsible for different functions of singing. You've got conscious thought up here, in the prefrontal area, and then you've got a language center over here on the left called Broca's area. And you've got all the voluntary actions of singing in a strip right above here called the motor cortex. And then there's a supplementary area, just rostral of it, just forward of that. You see, all of these areas in layer three need to communicate easily with layer one, with the brainstem, in order for your singing to flow. And here's where layer two comes in and messes everything up. Layer two is called the midbrain or the limbic system. And what it does, it's our sort of emotional processing center, but what it does is throw doubt, throw inhibition, throw uh, vulnerability into the mix. Now, in keeping with my analogy, it's layer two that's throwing down that blanket of snow. It's layer two, the limbic system, that's freezing your muscles, creating that lag between what you want to do and what you have to do physically. So what's my solution for getting rid of or reducing the effect of that limbic system of layer two on your singing? Gibberish. What do I mean by gibberish? Like a buddha by legisherba, like a bow. Oh,
Jesus will buy my toll. All right, obviously I want you to have as much fun with it as possible. And if you're going to dismiss that as some goofy little kid song, that's exactly my point. That if what you sing is so damn serious, all you're going to do is light up that layer two in your brain. If you even suspect a little flaw might be possible, that layer two is going to shut you down with that muscle inhibition and you will be struggling forevermore. So let's choose a song that's very adult, something very emotional and brooding. <laughs> song will work. Obviously I don't know that one. I'm playing the chords wrong. That doesn't matter either. The point is to reinforce all the basics of singing. The melody is there. The range is there. The syllables are the same. The only thing I'm doing is shutting off the importance of things being perfect and telling my brain it's playtime. What a great way to lay down the foundations of singing. So this will work for any age. It'll work for any genre. I give you some more examples. Check this out. As you can see, you can have a lot of fun with this if you're in the right frame of mind. And that's the whole point. Be playful. Doesn't matter what kind of music you sing. In order to unfreeze those muscles, to remove the block of that limbic system in your brain, that emotional center, you've got to change the approach. And gibberish is a great way to do this. Don't get all bogged down in whether you're doing it right or wrong. The point is to remove that aspect of the serious side of singing and really lay down some great principal foundational skills. Mark Baxter, com.